Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Asian Vision Dialogue. I'm Srinu, the host of today's program. Ladies and gentlemen, education plays an important role in social and economic development. And today, the theme of our topic will be about the Cambodia-Australia partnership in the educational sector, the voice from Cambodian scholars. And I am pleased to be joined by Dr. Chun Kong Kia and Ms. Meng Chan Ni as our guest speaker today. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me introduce um, briefly our guest. So Dr. Chun Kong Kia, he is a chair of um, the board of the Australian Alumni Association of Cambodia, and he is recently a senior um, program officer as well uh, at the Asian Development Bank, ADB, in Phnom Penh. Um, Ms. Uh, Dr. Kong Kia, he has received uh, his PhD in policy and governance from the uh, Australian National University in Australia, and also um, the, his master degree uh, at the University of Hawaii in the United States. And for Ms. Um, May Chan Ni, um, she's one of the alumni of the University of Canberra in uh, Australia, and she currently uh, an operation manager uh, at the Algorithmic Phnom Penh, uh, an international school of uh, programming. And uh, she has been in the field of education sector in, uh, for 16 years, and she has received her master's degree from the University of um, Auckland in New Zealand as well. So uh, without further ado, please join me in welcoming um, our guests to the program. Yeah, greeting uh, Dr. Kung Ki and Ms. Jenny. So um, could I ask, um, how are you doing today? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Very well. All I'm right. looking forward to children. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so um, without further ado, uh, let's start our discussion. And I would uh, give the floor to uh, Dr. Kung Kia first. So um, as uh, you are the chair uh, of the board of the uh, Australian Alumni Association, so uh, we just would like to know first uh, about uh, your perspective. Uh, what are the contributions that um, the Australian government uh, has made in uh, the development of education in Cambodia? Um, first of all, allow me to say thank you to Ms. Srinu for the invitation and to the Asian Vision Institute uh, also for the invitation. Um, before uh, I go straight to um, the answer, uh, please allow me to give you a brief background uh, so that uh, you, I mean, the audience can, can see things in, in a bigger picture. I think, as many people know, and especially here in, in the room, uh, Australia has been one of the largest uh, bilateral development uh, partners uh, with Cambodia. Um, Australia has been providing uh, development assistance, mainly in the form of grant finance to Cambodia, at least uh, since 1992. And uh, since 1992, Australia has been providing approximately 40 million US dollars a year to Cambodia. So this, this is a huge amount of, of money for a country like Cambodia. And uh, Australia, if we compare Australia to other Western countries, including China, Japan, uh, Australia is, I mean, depending on which year we are talking about, it's, it, it is considered as the fourth or the fifth largest uh, bilateral development partner to Cambo Cambodia. Uh, this is uh, I mean, I mean, after Japan, uh, China, and, and the United States, so so so, so Australia is big in this country. It it present, and uh, Australia has been uh, providing uh, finance to support Cambodia to rebuild and uh, rehabilitate, you know, our health education sectors in this country. Australia provide money to build uh, infrastructure like road, um, grid, uh, electric electric cities. And in addition to that, also we also provide uh, money to Cambodia to uh, improve our governance and public administration in this country. So education is one of the areas that you know Australia has been supporting to this country since 1992. Um, yes. Uh, now let me go to the also support to the education sectors in the country. Um, unlike other development uh, partner, 
uh, the Australian government support to Cambodian uh, uh, education sectors is mainly provided under the Australia scholarship program. You know, if you see other countries like uh, the US, other country Japan, uh, other country provide scholarship, but also other development program to support you know education sectors in in, in in Cambodia. But this is not the case for Australia. Australia. Uh, it, it support mainly focus on, 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 on scholarship, which is, I think, as you know, uh, it is the Australia Award Scholarship. So um, the government of Australia provide a scholarship to Cambodia since 1994, I mean, after the war. But I think if you look back further into history, um, Australia has provided scholarship to the country at least since the 1950s under the Colombo Plan. Long time ago, but, you know, because of the war in, in Cambodia, so Australia uh, stopped uh, providing uh, scholarship assistance to the country for a while and then recontinued this assistance in 1994. So since 1994, if we talk about number, um, the government of, of Australia uh, provide at least 40 scholarships to 40 Cambodians a year. That is a lot, you know, uh, uh, to enable a Cambodian um, I mean, the bright, able Cambodian to start um, to study masters and PhDs in uh, top uh, prest prestigious university in Australia, like the, U the University of Melbourne, the Canberra, the Australian National University, where I study. So I mean, to this scholarship, uh, the government of Australia aim to develop quality human resources for Cambodia, for the benefit of the Cambodian. I mean, the recipient, and of course, for the broader development of this country. And yeah, uh, so until now, at least 1,000 Cambodians have received scholarship from Australia. That is a huge number. 1,000 Cambodians uh, went to Australia for their master's and PhD program. So this is a huge, huge number. And uh, based on this number, uh, Australia is, is the largest uh, scholarship provider um, um, to Cambodia, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, among Western countries, like if we compare Australian scholarship to the scholarship provided by the U.S., the U.K. and European, Australia is the biggest one. So this in terms of number. Now let me go to the uh, contribution, the impact of this scholarship program on Cambodia. I, I can speak uh, from my own research and also uh, based on my role as the chairs of the Australian Alumni Association of Cambodia. Um, based on my own research, I mean, my PhD research looking at, uh, I mean, I compare the Australian scholarship and the Chinese one. So I have some data to back up my argument here. So my own research showed that uh, generally Cambodian scholars who went to Australia for their master and PhD are, are generally satisfied with the qualities of education they receive. They generally believe that they have acquired the knowledge, the skill they need you know, to do the work when they return home. And they, uh, you know, after they return, they are able to use the skill in their workplace. As soon as they came back from Australia, uh, they got promoted, you know, and they have the salary increase. And I think most importantly is that they believe that they have made bigger or more significant contribution to the development of Cambodia after they return. So um, this is based on my own research. Um, according to uh, my own observation, while I'm the chair of the association here in Phnom Penh, I can see that you know Australian alumni are everywhere in the country. They are in the governments, in the private sectors, in the civil society, and they are holding bigger important position in the country. Many of our Australian alumni are minister, secretary of state in the government. Many are leader in civil society. You know, if you look at at UNDP, United Nations Development Program here in Phnom Penh several uh, our alumni. So this is just to say that it's, it's, it's make significant contribution. Uh, lastly, I think in, uh, uh, in addition to what I have already said, um, in terms of direct impact on education, many of our, our alumni now are policy maker at the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport. They're making policy, they're designing program to ensure that Cambodian have access to qualities, education, you know, uh, I think that's one. And many of our alumni, they, they chose to work in the education sector. They are leaders, they are researchers, they are thinkers at, 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 at top university in Cambodia. So they, they, they transfer the knowledge they gain from Australia for the benefit of future generations of Cambodia. So in short, 
uh, Australian government, I think they make significant contribution to the development of Cambodia overall and uh, the development of Cambodian education sectors in particular. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Kung Ki, for your kind sharing. Yeah, um, so I really want to uh, the response from Dr. Kung Ki. I, um, I would like to know the view from uh, Ms. Jenny. So um, uh, we would like to know, like, um, do, what do you think are the difficulty or uh, challenges that uh, the Cambodian students um, uh, who wish to pursue their uh, education in Australia? Yeah, uh, after we know that, yeah, Australian government, they have provided a lot of scholarship to, yeah, to Cambodia. So how about students? Yes. Okay, thank you, Ms. Uh, Srinu. Yes, for, uh, first of all, for uh, the invitation to join this uh, Asian Vision uh, Dialogue. Yes, uh, to, personally, I think there may be some challenges, especially for scholars who would like to uh, pursue their study in Australia. But anyway, those challenges may be just uh, not a really a concern if they're really willing to go there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, I think maybe it is, it is the level of English proficiency yeah so as uh, you know for the previously uh, I mean they have I mean the access to uh, English sometimes they cannot reach the requirement of the university so they need to get themselves ready for the English proficiency in order to get the uh, specific overall for the IELTS test. For example, 6.5 and no band less than 6, something like that. Yes. And the second one, it can be the uh, admission criteria. Yes. So for a particular university and which course, so it depends. So they need to know like the GPA as well. I mean, in order to uh, meet the requirement of the of the university or the course that they are applied for. And later on, I think it uh, can be uh, they themselves. <laughs> Sometimes uh, they uh, lack of self-confidence. They put too much pressure or they set too high expectations to themselves. Actually, they themselves can do it, but they just don't believe in themselves that they can uh, uh, be a ball or be selected by the university. <coughs> so regarding this, I think just give them give ourselves a try. We will never know that we are we can meet the expectation or just not. If not, we try another time so that we can pass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one more thing, the challenge could be the finance. Yes, yeah, the finance. So they need to know how much they need to spend for the tuitions, also the cost of living. But they need to understand themselves whether they want to be self-funded. Or if not, for example, they cannot, they can look for scholarship like Dr. Kung Ki mentioned at the moment because Australian government offer a lot of scholarship, yes, to that one, yes. And last but not least, I think it can be the personal challenges, yes. That one is related to uh, being uh, in the new land, as you know, we may meet some challenges like homesick and we need to be away from uh, our... Uh, family and our colleague as well and sometimes they may hesitate as well whether they would like to go because for example if they go for master it may take for two years so they need to leave their workplace so sometimes they, it's hard for them to make decision as well whether they should go or they just uh, stay there for a while in order to uh, wait for the right time so that they can pursue the study so I think all of these can be the challenges but as long as they are willing to uh, go all these challenges won't be a problem for them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Jenny, for your answer. That's really uh, significant. So uh, now we turn to Dr. Kung Kia. Uh, so after you have heard uh, some perspective from uh, Ms. Jenny regarding like, uh, the difficulty and challenges from uh, Cambodian students. So um, we would like to know uh, your like, kinds of points of view. So what do you think uh, the Australian government and Cambodian government should do to further facilitate and encourage um, yeah, uh, the educational exchange among both countries. Uh, th thank you once again. I, I think let me put my thinking or answer this way. I think and I believe that uh, the scale and the form of the education partnership between Cambodia and Australia is already great at the moment. But I certainly that both can, countries can, can, can do more. I think from the Austrian government side, I think what, 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 what they can do is, I think first of all, they need to ensure that the, the, the current scale and form of assistance to Cambodia be continued. That means the government should continue providing 
the Australia Award Scholarship to Cambodia at, uh, for example, 50 to 40 scholarships a year to the countries. I think this is because I, I, I observed the trend in that, uh, uh, I think this is happening here in the countries and also around the world. Uh, Cambodia, I think uh, we have to acknowledge that we have progress over the years in 1992 when, you know, we have pieces. We have, I mean, e e economically, we are more wealthier, we are more wealthy. So, diff I mean, foreign countries like Australia, the United States and other countries tend to think that now Cambodia are more able so that they would like to, you know, reduce the, the cut, the development system to this country. I think uh, this thinking, uh, I wouldn't say that we have to depend on foreign aid forever, but I think at least in the next 10 to 15 years, uh, Cambodia certainly uh, need, I mean, I mean, Cambodia as a country is big, right, but in the country, they are poor and rich people. So I think uh, among the bright Cambodian, uh, they, they're still looking forward to receiving assistance because without uh, the scholarship, nobody from poor family, including myself, uh, can afford also a scholarship. So first, they need to continue providing the scholarship. And second, I, I think in addition to that, um, I know that years ago, the government of Australia provides a short-term uh, uh, training for mid-career professional uh, researchers and scholars, but for some reason, the government of Australia discontinued this assistance. Maybe because of they think that this program are not effective for whatever reason. So my suggestion is that the government of Australia should renew or revive this uh, uh, program so that Cambodian mid-career professional scholar can spend, let's say, three to six months in Australia to take coursework to do on-the-job training to conduct research with top, let's say, brilliant mind, also in researchers and scholars so that they can build their own capacity and bring those knowledge and expertise to Cambodia when they, yeah, when, when they finish their study. I, I think that's my second recommendation. Third, I think what the government also can do is to try something new. For example, try to create, let's say, program for younger people younger Cambodian in high school, in university, like first year, second year, uh, 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 yeah, certain year program. Such program may be, I, I think they can provide, let's say, internship program, or even short course uh, academic change to ensure that high school students and young university students can, you know, can, can, can fill the Austrian cultures, the education system while they are young. I think that's my recommendation for the Austrian government. From, from Cambodia, I mean for, for the government of Cambodia, I think as now we are more able, we are, I mean now Cambodia have more, more fiscal space, I, can, I think they can do more compared to 10 to 15 years ago. I think as much as possible, the government of Cambodia should try to re reciprocate as much as possible by providing, for example, scholarship to enable, let's say, Austrian citizen to do research or study that are in areas that are of mutual interest to both countries. I, I think, for example, I know that when I was in Australia, many Australians want to come to Cambodia to understand Cambodian culture, to understand the country history, the language. I think this is something that the government of Cambodia can do. Maybe provide 10 to 15, not full, but partial scholarship because, you know, Australian, when they come, they spend a lot, so maybe we're not able to provide full, but even partial scholarship is, is important to strengthen, I mean, you know, I mean to strengthen the, the partnership between the two countries. So um, we would like to uh, turn to uh, Ms. Jani um, with regard to, uh, like, uh, you in the names of alumni. So we would like to know, like, uh, so what student, what, are the, uh, what is the advice from you to give to the uh, Cambodian student who uh, wish to continue their study in Australia? Personally, I think for the younger generation, especially uh, for those who would like to pursue their study in Australia, I think there's there are some things that they need to be uh, bear in mind regarding that. So first of all, they need to get themselves ready for the English proficiency. Yes. So they have to set the time frame uh, when they feel that uh, and I think for the younger generation now, it's not really a challenge regarding uh, English proficiency because they attended uh, international school. So this can be really beneficial for them. 
Yes, but anyway, because to study, some uh, some students they can uh, speak very well, but they have some problem with uh, writing, something like that. So they need to get themselves ready for the IELTS in order to meet the requirement of the university or the course they are applying for. And the second one, they need to know what program that they would like to uh, take. Yeah, for example, undergraduate or postgraduate study, postgraduate refer to master, something like that. So. They need to be ready and they need to know even in Australia there are so many universities like Dr. Kungki mentioned. So they, and they themselves they need to know which part of, of Australia they would like to go to. Canberra, Sydney, Melbourne, something like that. And then they can look for the university and the course that uh, where the course is available as well. For example, they are interested in a Master of Educational Leadership, for example. So which university offer that? And some people, they even check the rank of the university as well. Yes, <laughs> all those, all universities in Australia uh, are world class, but they need, they have the specific one as well. So they need to be ready for that one. And now it's very easy and convenient because just, uh, I mean, they need to have the smartphone and internet. They can uh, go to wherever they want by searching that to look for the information. So when they spend time to look for the course and the university, uh, on the, uh, look for the information about the course on the university website, they have the information so, they need, they, so that it can help them to be ready what to prepare in order to apply to get the admission. Yes. And then another one regarding the uh, documentation as well. So it may take a little bit uh, time regarding applying for admission or applying for visa. So regarding this, they can do it by themselves by seeking support from those who have uh, been there before, have done that before, or they can look for the agency to help regarding that. So to be stress-free. <laughs> yes, and, and especially for those who want to uh, go for master degree, they need to be ready regarding the admission as well, like reference, yeah, they need to have the reference and they need to have experience, something like that, and they need to make sure that what they are doing, their, their previous degree also align with the course that they would like to continue in Australia as well, yes. And the second, uh, I mean, another one is that uh, finance, as I mentioned it previously as well. So they need to make sure that they can uh, fund the study by themselves or they need support. If support, look for scholarship like Dr. Kongki mentioned, Australian government offer a lot of scholarship to uh, our country. This one is really good with the support from our government as well. Our government also encourage uh, our scholar, yeah, to uh, go further in order to get new knowledge and skill to apply <coughs> in our country when they are back to for the country development. Yes, and another tip that I would like to share as well is to look for support. And if you want to go to study in Australia, talk to the person who has been there before, ask them for advice ask them for help if they have any really uh, a particular point to be clarified or support. Last but not least, uh, they need to have uh, confidence in themselves, make sure that uh, they can uh, have the opportunity to give them a, a try instead of just assuming or making themselves feel inferior. And related to this, role model play important. Yes. For example, if they see you uh, have been there before and they can say, oh, uh, Miss Ringo can do it. Yeah, Sister Ringo can do it. So maybe I can go and talk to her to ask her for advice. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can share the tip and then they are able to uh, be ready and access to the information that they want to know. So this is very simple and they can, uh, they can uh, get themselves ready in order to uh, achieve their dream. Yeah. Thank you. Miss Jenny, that's really a great advice. Thank yeah, you. And yeah, maybe I uh, actually they should uh, uh, go t to you. <laughs> yeah, or Dr. Kongki, yes. Yeah, yeah. But actually, yeah, I can I can go to ask for your support as well because uh, actually I also like um, been interested in studying in, in Australia yeah, as well. You're very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, actually, yeah, uh, our guest speaker have uh, mentioned like their advice, their recommendation. It seems like uh, we come to the end of the dialogue, but actually we yeah, have another two questions more for uh, uh, the speaker. So um, 
Concerning uh, the response from uh, Dr. Kunki mentioned uh, with regard to the programs, um, like exchange program, to be uh, further uh, added in the, um, the like uh, in the partnership between Cambodia and Australia. So, from from your perspective, is it beneficial and is it practical for the government to um, like? Um, improve uh, the uh, relation between uh, both countries by adding more uh, edu edu educational exchange uh, yeah, and on the topic of like climate change, leaderships and yeah, so on. So do you think it's, it's really beneficial? Thank you, Nu, for the question. Yes, to me it's really uh, beneficial, yes, for the youth. Uh, why do I say so? First of all, so when they have the exchange program, they can expose themselves to the new environment. And they will learn a lot of things with new people, learn new culture, also learn a lot of things from there. And uh, especially they can bring what is uh, regarded as our identity or culture to share with their friends or people that they meet from different parts of the world. So this one is very important. They, they share their identity with us, their culture with us, and also uh, for them, for our Cambodian Jews also can share our cultures. Yeah. And uh, this uh, exchange program, it won't last long, so it's also help. For example, if they are studying a particular year here, the first year, the second year here, they can just go there just for one week or two weeks or three months, something like that. It depends on the exchange program. They have the opportunity to uh, sneak away from their study to learn new things and then come back to share with their peers in here so that they can uh, be able to uh, apply what they have learned new things in there. And one more thing, they also uh, help with the personal development as well. When they go there, they can be independent and they can sometimes they even uh, go to live with the uh, families there and learn a lot of things. And in, in addition to culture, it can be the ways of living, the event over there, national events over there as well, and also help them to grow to the next level regarding personality as well. They learn how to do teamwork, how to be away from their parents and what they have never done before, like for example, over here, they always supported and never been apart from their parents, away from the family. Over there, learn to live and to share uh, with other people. So teamwork is very important when they come back, when they go to work. It also adds the value to what they have done or what they are doing during the study or their, at their workplace as well. And one more thing, like uh, our new generation of Jews play important role in uh, contributing to the development of the community or also the country as the whole. So the more they can go, I mean the further they can go, the more that they can learn. So a chain program I think is the best one. Yeah, thank you. So um, so how about uh, the pers perspective from Dr. Kungkir uh, with the same question. Uh, do you think uh, is it beneficial and do you think like uh, is there any other like relevant topic if you would like to propose? Um, yes, I, I fully agree with uh, what Ms. Chani has already said. But in addition to that, what I wanted to highlight is that uh, the benefits of the scholarship goes beyond uh, the improvement of understandings of the people of Australia and Cambodia and the benefit of the Cambodian youth, I think. Uh, I would like to emphasize that um, the, the, the partnership the education partnership between Australia and, and Cambodia is, is one of the most successful partnership. I mean like Australia and Cambodia, they can, they can have many forms of partnership like, like okay, partnership in here and there, but, but, but education is, is one of the most successful ones. Why I said that? You know, uh, if we look at from the Australian perspective, uh, providing educational support is one of the smartest, the wisest way for the Austin government to use its development assistance to promote the soft power to to make influence in countries like Cambodia, so this is uh, I think I think the most effective, smartest way to do so. Why I why I said that, you know, by bringing Cambodian people, the brightest mind who will uh, be future leaders when they complete the study. This is a great example. Fifty Cambodian are exposed to Cambodian uh, Austrian culture. Australian political system, economic system, uh, exposed to the people. I mean, when people are there, the longer they stay, they tend to fall in love with that society. Yeah. 
when they come back, they become leader. They will become, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I think the English word I forgot the, na- the, the the term, but that they will treat Australian people, the government more favorably. If there any dispute internationally, that Cambodian leader have to decide which one to support. Most likely, the Cambodian who study in Australia will treat Australian uh, more favorably. I can give you not not in, uh, not, not an example in term of, uh, at the leadership level, but you know back in early two, uh, 2020, uh, there's a big bush fires in Australia, right? Uh, the, the the pictures of that animal in Australia, uh, I mean, it circulated around the world. And, and Cambodian who studied in Australia, they would feel very bad of that image. And then what they did was that they they raised fund, they, they raised about ten thousand US dollar, and then donate to the Australian government. So ten thousand from a poor country like Cambodia, this is a big number, and and I think this is an example that that the the Australian scholars have make an influence in Cambodia. That I'm talking about the, the influence on the soft power on, on, uh, on the diplomatic side. Uh, in addition to the um, di- diplomatic benefits, there is also economic benefit to Australia as well. I think as you can see, education is one of the biggest sectors in Australia. So the, uh, I think one of the ob- objectives of the Australian government is that they want to export education, Australian education abroad. So by bringing Cambodian brightest mind to Australia to study there, the Australian is able to showcase the qualities of Australian education to Cambodian parents who are, I mean, if they are able to find their, their kids to study in Australia, they, are, they, they will send their kid to, to Australia. And I think this has already been happening. More and more Cambodian parents send their kid to study in Australia every year. While I was in Canberra back in 2014, we have about 100 Cambodian students study in Canberra. About 70% of those in Canberra are self financed Only 30% are on scholarship. So you can see, like, also scholarship make, uh, uh, um, uh, I mean, provide a lot of benefit to the Ocean government as well. This is not to mention that Cambodian scholars who return to Cambodia will be a good human resources for Ocean company who are, you know, operating in here. So I, I'm talking about the benefit to the Ocean government. And for the Cambodian one, I think you, I think she, she already mentioned, education, human capital, is all one country need to develop their society, right? By having Cambodian study in Australia, come back and do a good thing for the country, this will benefit the whole society. So I, I think, uh, yes. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Gong Kia, for your uh, very insightful uh, response with regard to the question uh, that we have uh, discussed so far. And yeah, uh, to wrap up, it means like uh, the partnership uh, in educational sector between Cambodia and uh, Australia has also uh, impact in other domains like uh, diplomatics, even economics benefits. So uh, I think uh, we have come to the end of our dialogue. And yeah, once again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gong Kia and uh, Ms. Jenny, for your time and a meaningful discussion today. Yeah, I look forward to having you, both of you, uh, in our next episode. Yeah, uh, finally, I also would like to thank uh, Ms. Rino, yeah, also the Asian Vision Institute for the invitation for me and Dr. Kung Kia for having us today as well. Yeah, thank you. So uh, thank you once again. And ladies and gentlemen, the Asian Vision Dialogue has now come to an end. And I hope you have enjoyed uh, the discussion uh, between uh, uh, both speaker and uh, the Asian Vision Dialogue. Thank you for turning in and see you in the next episode.